Hello, my name is Megan Clanahan. I am the co-owner of Houston Moms. And today I have the pleasure to bring to you um, two weather experts uh, and energy experts from Houston. Top of mind right now for a lot of us is the start of hurricane season. And after such a um, weird last year, and then um, what happened in February, we wanted to make sure that all of our Houston parents are prepared and ready for hurricane season. So today I have joining me, um, Scott Burns. He is a Reliant. Um, I want to make sure I say it correctly, Vice President of Innovation and Customer Experience. And then some of y'all may recognize this name, but not necessarily the face, um, because we often see him on Facebook or um, on his website. But we also have Eric Berger with uh, Space City Weather joining us today as well. Um, on a personal note, and I told Eric this earlier, um, I was kind of like nerding out a little bit. Um, I feel like Eric got me through Hurricane Harvey and that's um, kind of how I found him and how millions around have found um, Space City weather. And so, um, guys, thank you so much for being here this morning. It's a pleasure, Megan, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So I do want to mention um, Reliant is generously sponsoring this video and also an incredible giveaway for um, one lucky commenter. Um, so we have, and I will just show it, um, it is Goal Zero in partnership with Reliant. It's a portable power station um, as well as a 20 watt um, solar panel. And we are going to take comments below. As you watch this video, um, tell us how you're preparing for hurricane season. Um, tell us if you're prepared. Tell us your thoughts about hurricane season. We want to hear them all. Um, comment below and you'll be entered for a chance to win this. Um, it's a $450 value. Um, and I can tell you, it's invaluable to have during hurricane season for sure. So um, I'll be reminding you throughout this um, to make sure to comment to win. And um, we wanna say hello to y'all. So Eric, thank you so much for being here. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, we don't get to see your face very often because we're, we're seeing your Facebook um, post. So um, do you mind sharing just a little bit about you, um, kind of how you, got into this and um, just your day-to-day -day life? Yeah, so my background is in uh, science and in journalism. And uh, I did that for the Houston Chronicle for a long time. Um, and probably the most important moment for me was actually Tropical Storm Allison, which was way back in 2001. But it's, it remains the, the costliest tropical storm to ever hit the United States. And it obviously flooded Houston. And I was stuck out and about on the town that night um, caught unawares uh, and so after that event I was like well why didn't I know that was coming um, and I had only moved to Houston a few years earlier and so it was you know the kind of thing where you're like this, this, I'm not used to flooding like this <laughs> what's going on um, so I, I started learning more and more about meteorology and flooding and so forth and then just kind of over time, it's, it's grown into this role of, of kind of communicating some of those same kind of answers to the questions that I had you know, almost two decades ago. Um, and so it's just been kind of an evolution. Of course, we've been hit by other storms, uh, Hurricane Ike and uh, you know, other, other storms as well. So it's just been, it's been a process and it's, it's basically as much as it's meteorology, it's communication. And I think that, thank you for bringing that up. I think the communication is so, so important there. Um, and the way you communicate is the no nonsense. Like, I just want to hear it as it's going to be. Um, and I think the more we know that's not hype um, is we're better for it, right? And you're also a dad, right? I'm a dad, I have two daughters. Um... It was a very big weekend in our house. My 13-year-old had her first big date at the school dance. And so lots of, lots of um, 
stuff going on this past week. I'm glad to be through that, to be honest. <laughs> oh, bless. Yes. <laughs> like I have um, twin 10 year olds, almost 11 year olds, and I'm not sure I'm quite ready for all the. It's coming. No, I don't want your non nonsense approach to um, dating, but we'll take it for weather. Um, so obviously, we are starting hurricane season. Um, kicks off in June. Um, realistically, it really doesn't start happening for us a little bit later. Can you kind of speak to what we're anticipating for the 2021 season? Um, what their projections are? Um, for what you're seeing. Yeah, so hurricane season typically begins June 1st um, and, and runs to the end of November. But for Houston, you know, when we talk about the classic powerful hurricanes with wind, storm surge, and rainfall, you know, the biggest threat for us is late July through sort of the end of September. Um, but the time certainly to prepare for it is now. Um, this year, we, we forecasters are anticipating a busier than normal season. Um, on average, about 50% more activity than you would normally see. Um, so instead of you know, maybe 10 to 12 named storms, it might be 16 or 18. Um, and so that just increases the odds that Texas might see some activity. It certainly doesn't guarantee it. You know, there's no real value in trying to forecast at this point where storms are going to form or go. Um, but we can get a sense based upon the fact that there is no El Nino and there are some other factors that are indicating warmer sea temperatures in the Atlantic, that it will be a busier than normal season. Um, you know, you want to prepare every year because even during very slow seasons, Houston could be affected by a tropical storm or hurricane. Wow. But, but obviously the odds are a little higher this year. Um, and so we just, you know, it's, it's coming. It's time to get ready. Um, and we have to. Um, and I think February reminded us all that we need, it was another, it was like that halfway reminder that we need to have stuff on hand um, and be ready. So as a dad, as um, a meteorologist, like what, what does your family do to prepare for hurricane season? What does that look like for y'all? So I think the most important step that most people can take is to understand the vulnerabilities or risks of where they live and where they work. Um, you know, if you're right near the coast, obviously you're very concerned about storm surge. If you live in inland Houston, you're less concerned about storm surge. Um, but, you know, you also need to figure out how vulnerable you are to flooding. Um, some areas received an all-time event during Hurricane Harvey, whereas other areas got a little bit less. And so maybe Hurricane Harvey, if you didn't flood, doesn't mean, it may not mean that you're invulnerable to flooding. It just may mean that you were in an area, as they say, that received less rainfall. Um, and then finally, you need to understand your, you know, vulnerability to winds, you know, under what conditions would you leave? Um, I think it's pretty much a guarantee that if a hurricane hits Houston, you know, the power is going to be out. So are you willing to live in a house without power, you know, sort of toward the end of summer for, you know, one to three weeks? Um, and I think that's, you know, something that people really need to think about when they, they you know, worry about evacuating. You know, we took the step at our house this year, this past year to actually install a home home generator just because of the vulnerability due to wind and then, you know, the power loss during the ice storm as well. And so it's really understanding sort of the risks of where you are, kind of the conditions that you're willing to tolerate um, in terms of, as I say, power outages or, you know, water on hand or worrying about storm surge and then making a plan for dealing with each of those. For example, if you decide that you're gonna evacuate, if there's a category two hurricane that's gonna make landfall in Houston, then you ought to be planning about where you're going to go, what you're going to take, if you have pets, what you're gonna do with pets, because obviously they need to be protected as well. Such great points there. Um, and then especially considering, I love how you put it, what is your tolerance level? Um, you know, if you have babies and toddlers at home, like what do you have on hand to be able to take care of them? Um, you know, I have the twin 10 year olds and it wasn't like a joy to write out. Um, I say the, like the power thing in February, but um, that was not as much fun as I've had. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it can be pretty, it can be pretty horrible. Um, yeah. and with a, with a hurricane, you know, you're talking about longer outages. And the fact of the matter yeah. is, you know, even with a major windstorm, if you're not right on the coast, you know, you're probably going to live, right? The, the loss of life is not your, your main threat. 
um, that comes more from storm surge um, as opposed to winds. So it's really about sort of, do you want to have, because it's not just the power outages, like the, the actual 12 to 24 hours when the, when the hurricane is blowing through is pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, if you got younger kids, you know, they're going to be pretty terrified by that. Maybe some of them will think it's a great party, but, but others will be certainly scared and it's, it's just not, it's not fun. So you think about that, yeah, and and the time to do that is not like three days before it, when everyone's, you know, stocking up at Home Depot or the the freeways are clogged or you can't get a hotel room in Dallas. It is the time to do that now to make those plans. That's a great point. You need to have your exit plan in place. And um, a little background, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but um, I am a Hurricane Katrina survivor, if you will. Um, I live just north of New Orleans and Slidell when Katrina came through. Um, and my husband and I had evacuated for hurricanes prior to like lose a leaf off the tree. Like it wasn't intense. Um, but we saw that monster coming and um, we peaced out. Uh, but it was, it was not fun. And I cannot imagine having kids. And um, but I'm so grateful, obviously, that we left um, because we ended up with like six feet of water in our house. So um, I think make the plans, right? Be prepared. Um, be ready to go if they say go. Uh, I think is so so important. And they. So um, how is the what's the best way for us to get? good information in regards to these storms that come. Um, I know, can you tell us a little bit about how you post on your channels and web, website, all that? Right, so, so just going back a little bit to planning, there are lots of good tools online. Um, mm -hmm. For example, you can Google your flood zone and your evacuation zone, just you know, Harris County flood zone or Harris County evacuation zone to find out whether you're considered in a high risk area for surge or not. Um, and that'll give you a good idea. Um, and then you can find your elevation and, and sort of assess your flood risk um, that way. Um, and then you can do things like with your home. You know, if you look in the you look in the roof and you see it has little clips that hold down the roof during a hurricane, these are metal clips on the side um, in the attic, then your home is probably much safer than it otherwise would be during a hurricane because it's the, the roof blowing off is less of a likelihood. Um, so those are, so you can find some of that information online, but then in terms of forecasting, you know, the gold standard really is the National Hurricane Center. It's mm -hmm. federally funded by NOAA. Um, the forecasters there have no political agenda. They're, they're looking at the best possible information, some of which is publicly available and some of which is not. And they have the expertise to really sort of offer the best track forecast. Um, and then at, at Space City Weather, what we try to do is sort of help people interpret that information and say, well, what would that track mean for Texas or for Houston or for wherever it's going to make landfall um, and, and help with the timing and, and impacts and things like that. Perfect. Um, and, you know, I know you'll be posting during hurricane season as things are happening, um, posting to your Facebook um, that's where I found you was on Facebook, um, but you also post to your blog. Um, and so go to Space City Weather and follow them for a no nonsense. And um, this is what's happening and this is what you need to be prepared for. Um, and very, very little hype at all. Um, and I super appreciate that. Um, and I do want to mention again, so I want to remind y'all, we have that giveaway and the $450 giveaway. So as we're talking about hurricane preparedness, if you decide to stay or if we're going to lose power or anything like that, um, definitely want to have one of these on hand. Portable power station um, is awesome. So that way you can charge your cell phones, do all of that, um, as well as the solar panel. It's a 20 watt um, again, four hundred and fifty dollars value. So drop your comments below. Um, are you prepared for hurricane season? Are you ready? Um, what are you doing um, to get ready? Um, if you're not, because it's here, it's happening. Um, so, um, we're going to transition over um, to Scott. Um, Scott, you are the director, um, vice president, sorry, of innovation. Um, and customer experience at Reliance. So we have some questions for you for sure. Um, 
as it relates to power and all the things. So you're also a dad, right? I am. Dad of, dad of four. Dad of four. Okay. And then I think you were telling me you have three in college right now? Three in college. One's about to be done. So I'm a little bit further along than, than y'all are. I've got, uh, yeah, one, one's graduating with his master's degree here this week, and he'll be the first first one out of the nest. But uh, but yes, have gone through uh, what many of you have, or, or what both of you are going through with uh, with ten year olds and and thirteen year olds, and uh, and having the daughter Erica, I can appreciate the uh, stress of that of those first first dates for sure. <laughs> Y'all, I'm just not ready, but um, we will get there. So, um, Scott, so tell me a little bit about how Reliant is preparing for hurricane season. What does that look like for you? So. Reliant being a you know big part of Houston and being you know longtime Houston company, we as employees are also in, in you know we're also personally preparing, and so it's we're very very attuned to to what we need to do to help our our customers out. And so one of the things we highly recommend is going to ReliantStormCenter.com. So there's preparedness checklists there, things that you know you need to stock up on. You know, not only the things like you know, non-perishable food and flashlights and batteries and those sorts of things, but also you know for for those that do have kids extra formula, diapers, uh, backup medication, all those things as we kind of get ready for storm season to kick off. Like Eric was saying, when, when you're a kid, and I grew up in Sugarland, right? And so I was, you know, it was kind of exciting when, when storms would come in, we were far enough away to where we weren't, you know, kind of an imminent threat. So as a kid, you, you, you know, it, it was, there's some excitement, there's a little bit of trepidation, but as an adult and as a parent, it's com it completely is different, right? And so you really want to be prepared. Now, now you're responsible for little people and, uh, and the entire perspective changes. And so, Really being prepared, going in with a plan, um, I think is the most, uh, is, is really the most important. And that's ReliantStormCenter.com is a, is a really helpful resource. I'm so glad you mentioned that. And um, so make sure that y'all bookmark that. And um, because I know that I need all of the lists and the things that I may have forgotten or that I just didn't think about. We will also have a blog post coming out too. And um, that will have this laid out. Uh, so that way you guys can re reference back to that. So Scott, we often think of Reliant as just a power company, right? An um, electricity company. Um, so tell us like a little bit more. I mean, we, we talked about the portable power solutions and all of that. Tell us how, how Reliant is doing more than just providing electricity. Yeah, so so we know that outages have been a thing, whether it's uh, the storms, whether it's been the you know summer summer related hurricane type storms, or even winter storms that we just experienced. And so providing customers that resiliency is really important. And so we've got a uh, a service where we help refer customers. And Eric has gone through this process, and I highly recommend you go to Eric's website and where he talks about his experience with uh, with with standby backup generators. Um, it's, you know, it's an investment, but it's a, uh, it's definitely peace of mind, especially with kids to have that, that, that backup power as a, as a backup generator there. And so we've got a, a, a partner that we partner with and Reliant customers get 10% off those generators. So that's, that's an option, right? If you want to back up your entire house or have a permanent standby generator there, that's one of the options. You've got kind of portable generators that, that, you know, either gas powered or what you just showed, which is the, uh, the goal zero type solutions, which are which are portable, and the great thing about the solution that you're showing is not only can it power things at your home during storms, but also when you you're running the kids to a soccer tournament or you're at a you know an all day an all day little league event, um, having that power makes you very very popular with all your friends because inevitably people start you know getting a little bit of a twitch when their cell phones go below fifty percent, right? And so it's a great solution. The great thing is it can power things in the home, but also power things on the go. So. So there's a, a wide spectrum, I would say, from the ones that are permanent to ones that are more portable. But but definitely, if customers have that as a concern, we can provide solutions for you. I I love how you mentioned that because I do get a little twitchy um, if I'm low, and I might be low on my phone right now, and I'm like, whoa, um, because we are on the go. So I think um, you know we don't have to always reserve this stuff for. And, um, you know, when the power goes out during hurricanes. Um, and so tell us a little bit about, you mentioned earlier, the generator being installed. And you said the 10% discount. What is it, what is the installation, what does that look like um, to get an in-home generator? So we'll actually have someone come, come out to your home. Um, so you can go on, on to, uh, you know, you go reliant.com slash generators. And then, and there's a, a form there you can fill out and, and we'll contact you. 
Um, but but basically someone will come and do an assessment for your home and it's very it is very personalized and again eric can speak to this but you know some people may opt to say hey i want my entire home powered or some say i have certain circuits i want to power right so generally speaking your air conditioner is your biggest biggest user in the home so if you want to provide air conditioning it ends up being a pretty sizable generator but if you're just mainly concerned with certain circuits your your refrigerator those sorts of things you can size that down but they'll do an assessment of what your needs are where the best location is for your generator. In Eric's case, because he's in an area that, that might be more prone to flooding, they have uh, they actually raise the generator on a platform. So it, it's real. It's very dependent upon where you're you're actually looking to put the generator. But uh, but they'll basically you'll you'll agree to the plan, and then they'll they'll work on the permitting and take care of take care of it for you. But it ends up being a several week process. And right now, as you can imagine, after the winter winter storm, there's been a, a high demand. So I would say. If people are interested in doing this before the uh, the hurricane season, now is a really good time to start that process. So fill out that form. You said it's at Reliant.com. And... Slash generators, yeah. Okay, so make sure you fill out that form so you can get someone to come to your house. Um, this is kept totally coming from a mom like perspective. So when you say like the generator is installed, are we talking like inside, outside? Like what what's happening here? Yeah, the way you think about generators, so these per, these permanent standby generators are, are outside your home. They're generally, they, they almost look like an air conditioning unit, right? And, and so basically it's a, a, a box that's permanently affixed on a pad uh, outside the home. That's, a, that's a, a standby generator. There's also portable generators, again, that you can buy at any of the big box uh, hardware stores that you, that you can use with gas. The, the big things with those, people generally store those in the garage, but you're not to run them in the garage. You're always to run them outside in a well-vented, uh, ventilated area. Um, so that's one of the ones. And then the great thing about the Goal Zero Solutions, and again, I, I encourage people to go check us out again. Uh, Reliant customers get a 10% discount for Goal Zero, but Goal Zero has those power stations from very large that can power you know, full, full-size full refrigerators and, and go for hours versus the ones that are smaller, like the one you're, you're showing today. Um, but they those the great thing about those is they don't necessarily need to be outdoors. They're not, they're not you know, combustion type engines and so they're uh, they're just using battery power and so they're they're no noise all, all that goes with being a battery so that's that's another really great solution i think that's great and i think that y'all it's wonderful that you have relationships with goal zero and um, to help power um depending upon your needs and where you are and kind of alluding to what eric said before it really just depends on where in houston you are because um, you know, we, we obviously span from the woodlands down to like the Bay Area. Um, your situation is going to be different. I live in Katy for reference. Uh, but we have like one of those gas powered, like really noisy generators. But um, I mean, it does its job, right? Um, we had enough to keep our refrigerator alive. So um, to kind of transition a bit, we are obviously not only launching into hurricane season, but we are also launching into summer hot season of, with the power grid and things that have been happening there. What advice would Reliant give to, um, to the Houston area as to how to conserve power this summer? Yeah, we've had a pretty mild spring so far, but but the heat uh, is a coming, right? And Eric could probably attest to that as well. It's it's coming. It, it's coming. It's one of those things in Houston that that you can't avoid. And and in Houston, by far the largest user of of energy uh, is your air conditioner. It can be between forty and six percent of your total electricity costs in the summer. So um, we highly recommend people go ahead now before it gets too hot and schedule that that tune up AC tune up. I would say. My house has already had issues with with condensation, right? As the as the air conditioners have come on, and so now is a really great time to get the the technician out to make sure everything's running, um, because it does just like just like generators um, during a hurricane, it's hard to get an air conditioning person when it's 100 degrees outside, right? So being able to go ahead and schedule those now and be be out in front and be preventative, you know, if you think about your car. We all are pretty religious about getting our, our oil changed when we see, you know, at 3,000 or 5,000 or whatever the recommendations are. But but your house, you just kind of let it go until something breaks, right? And so we need to be as proactive with our houses as we are with our cars. And so we definitely recommend a tune-up this time of year. What a great tip. I think um, for our house, we always get it tuned up um, twice a year um, to check those Freon levels. Um, I'm a mom over 40. And so I really need my air conditioner to like 
be functioning. Um, it's important to me. And, um, but we do have those occasional like, Hey, like we may have to like fix this or, you know, put a little more free on and what have you. And so, um, Houston parents don't forget to, uh, make sure that you're tuning up on your AC as you're getting hurricane prepared too, for sure. Um, is there like an optimum, uh, AC temperature we need to keep it at? Like, is there something that would rely on would say like, this is your, this is where you should be. So there is the energy star recommendations. And I'm guessing, uh, based on what you just said earlier about, uh, the, the comfort level in your home, you, you may not go for it, but, but energy, energy star recommends 78 degrees during the summer. Um, which, <laughs> which I think many people would, would feel as warm. Um, but, uh, but that's kind of what they recommend. If you go to energy star, um, the website, they have specific recommendations that said, um, you know, one of the great things about, uh, Reliant is we, we offer what's called a pick your free, uh, program where you can, where we offer either free nights, free weekends, or, or truly free flex days. But, um, for those that really want to be comfortable at night, a free nights type plan like that may be, um, may be a great solution for you. So you can go, uh, you know, a degree or two below that 78 degrees to where you can sleep comfortably. Cause I've, I've, I've told that 78 degrees to family members and, and uh, people have pushed back a bit as you wouldn't be surprised, so. No, I, I'm, I'm comfortably 10 degrees below that. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> it just, it is what it is. Um, but so you mentioned that, is there, what's the degrees of difference program? Can you kind yeah, of so speak degree, to that? Yeah. Yeah, Degrees of Difference program is a, it's a, a program that, that we've been offering to cover customers for the last couple of years. And, and the purpose of the program is customers can enroll the, those that have smart thermostats. So we've got Nest, Honeywell, and Emerson that are all part of that program. So if you have a smart thermostat, you can enroll in the program. Reliant will give you a $25 bill credit to participate. And, and what it does is during periods of high demand, um, there's algorithms that occur that, that make minor adjustments uh, to the thermostat to help really optimize the overall usage across Texas. And, and again, in, in the winter storm we just experienced, um, those sorts of things become very, very valuable to us as a, as a grid overall. Um, the great thing about the program is you're always in control, right? So if there's ever a time you're like, uh, I, I'm, you know, I want it 68 degrees in the summer. Great, you're in control. You can go and, and control that. But there may be times you're out of the home, and those minor adjustments are generally, you know, not, mo in very the mass, vast majority of cases, people don't even know those those events are going on. But they get a $25 bill credit for participating, and they're kind of doing their part in helping to kind of levelize the grid. That's so important. So, where do they find out more information on degrees of difference? If they just go, yeah, just go to yeah, reliant.com um, slash degrees, and and it'll be there. But there's, but but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a program very very uh, low touch and, and low customer involvement, and it's just a great chance to again get twenty five dollar bill credit. Yeah, and 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 help out our fellow Texans, um, for sure. And I know, especially now, as more people are probably heading back to the office. And there might be times where you can um, have that um, AC set a little bit higher than you typically would. Um, I don't have an office. I, I mean, this is my office. Um, but when my husband goes back, then we can take advantage of that for sure. Um, anything else, um, Scott, that you want to add to Reliant and what they're doing for hurricane season? Uh, no, just keep keep uh, looking out for for uh, news around our Beat the Heat centers and other community events that we do for for those that are kind of disenfranchised and and, and need additional assistance. Um, you know, we are a big part of this community. I mean, we live here and we've been here for a long time, so it's really important that that as we go into the summer months and people are a little more uh, vulnerable, that that we're helping to provide additional support. I love the Beat the Heat centers. So that's also an encouragement, um, Houston. Make sure you're checking in on your neighbors um, and your friends who, who who may struggle during times where there's power outages and, and help get them to a center where they can get um, some relief from, from the heat. Um, Thank you, Scott, so much. And Eric, um, I wanted to come back to you real quick because I have um, I have a question. Um, is this like the Super Bowl? Is like going into hurricane season? Like, what does this feel like for you? I mean, obviously you're passionate about it. Um, so are you, how do you launch into hurricane season? Um, you know, <laughs> I, it's not, it's not like the Super Bowl for me. I mean, First and foremost, I'm a homeowner, 
and um, you know, father. And, and so I have, you know, I have to look out for my family. Um, and so the last thing genuinely that I want to see is inclement weather moving toward us, right? Um, and with that being said, you know, hurricane season is important to the site because that's when the majority of people are looking to what we do. And so we want to make sure um, that, that we're accurate. Um, and so I always tell my wife that, you know, if we're going to take a big summer trip, which we usually do, we need to take it in June because by the time we get in the second half of July and August, we really need to be around in case, you know, in case things hit the fan. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I, you, you head into summer, I don't look forward to it by any stretch of the imagination. I actually look forward to the end of September because that means that fall is coming and hurricane season is over pretty pr practically and, and cooler, cooler times are ahead. Um, but it's definitely a time to be, that Matt Lance and I need to be on top of our, on top of our game because people are looking toward us to, to provide some information. I would also just say, Megan, you know, we talk a lot about the beginning of hurricane season and build it up and hurricanes are devastating, threatening events. Um, but the fact of the matter is most years, the Houston region will not see significant impacts from seasons. So I always tell people, you know, obviously be wary of storms and, and be prepared, but it's not something you need to fret about on a daily basis. Or, or really get worked up or, or have high anxiety levels. Because most of the time, it's not going to be a significant impact. And you know you just shouldn't spend your, your, your life worrying about these things. Be prepared, you know, be ready to take action, and then hope that you won't, and most times you won't. Such sage advice there. Um, and I personally appreciate it as someone who gets a little PTSD um, anytime I see something. Yeah. Um, in the Gulf. Um, I get a little nervous, but we have it in our control to be as prepared as possible. Um, and then what will be, will be. Um, and so again, Houston, we just recommend um, the time to get ready is now. Um, hurricane season is, Eric, you would say it's going to fire up what, like, we're looking towards the middle of August. Is well, I mean, hurricane seasons, hurricanes can form at any time. Right. Um, it's activity is typically lower until you get to the end of July, early August. And so the busiest times for us typically would be August and most of September. Okay. And I had to like personal antidote. And um, when you said you can't go on vacation, um, August, September, uh, I got married September 13th. I don't recommend uh, September 13th wedding date. I think we have spent like a handful of evacuation dates. Um, so if you're planning your wedding, maybe not during mm -hmm. September if you live on the Gulf Coast. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am so, so appreciative of everything that Eric and Space City Weather are doing to keep us all informed accurately. Um, get the information out. And it's not just during hurricane season either. And um, they'll let you know the rain patterns and what the weather is looking like um, daily. And I love looking for my updates in the morning um, to see um, how good my hair is gonna be that day. Um, and then Scott with Reliant. Um, Reliant is you know, obviously Houston iconic. Um, and we are so grateful for all the things that Reliant does um, to help keep Houstonians safe um, as we go into this hurricane season. So again, I want to remind you, drop your comments below on um, how you're preparing for hurricane season. If you're preparing, if you've already prepared, um, if you have a picture of your preparedness kit, Drop that below too. Um, I know Reliant has some great resources that you can get your um, hurricane preparedness kit. Um, and then you'll be eligible to win um, the 20 watt pool, uh, portable solar panel, as well as the Goal Zero portable power station, which as Scott pointed out, is also great um, outside of hurricane season and just um, if you're on the road for kids sports games um, as we typically are on the weekend. So um, you'll be the most popular mom in town. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us. Um, Scott, Eric, it's been a pleasure. I hope you'll have a great day. Thank you.